Everyone is laser focused on eating the calorie deficit, doing the keto diet to lose body fat, doing intermittent fasting to lose weight, drinking apple cider vinegar to lose body fat, all of these tactics, but how often do you hear people talking about what's happening on the inside with your fat burning hormones? Let's talk about fat burning hormones and how we can optimize them to burn the most fat possible. Also stay to the end of the video because I have a little something for you and you're going to want to know all three fat burning hormones so that you can burn the maximum amount of fat. Fat burning hormone number one is HGH or human growth hormone. Human growth hormone is going to help spare muscle tissue. It's also going to help you burn fat, especially at night whilst you're sleeping. Getting enough sleep, seven to nine hours per night, <laughs> is going to help boost your growth hormone levels. And really the reality is the more sleep you get, the more growth hormone you will have. Now obviously in a perfect world, yeah, you might get 10 hours of sleep per night, but this has to be in balance with your lifestyle. Obviously most of us can't sleep 10 hours a night, we have so much other things going on, but making sure you get a minimum of 7 hours, and ideally 8 to 9 if possible. Also eating a high protein diet will increase growth hormone. Now if you want to know what a high protein diet is, this is a simple calculation you can use to make sure that you're hitting your protein numbers every day. Weigh yourself, take your body weight in pounds, multiply that by one, and then eat that many grams of protein per day. So for example, I might weigh 165 pounds, I multiply that by one, that's 165 grams of protein per day. That's going to optimize my protein, that's going to optimize my growth hormone levels. In terms of what exercise we can do to boost growth hormone, the best type of exercise, and I don't want to make this too complicated, is HIIT, which is HIIT training. That's high intensity interval training. That is the best type of exercise to boost your growth hormone levels. However, I don't typically recommend it under these circumstances. So, if you don't currently lift weights, you're not interested in lifting weights, then by all means do HIIT cardio two to four times per week. If you're into weight training, if you want to build the most muscle possible, although HIIT will help boost a lot of your anabolic hormones, it also is very strenuous on the body. So if you're trying to really go all in on your weight training, doing HIIT cardio is something I would not recommend in between because it's going to limit your ability to recover from your weight training. You will not be able to do a high volume workout and HIIT training as well. It's too much stress on the body. So if you're weight training, if you really want to throw one HIIT session in a week, then you can, but typically I don't recommend it. Utilizing intermittent fasting is another way to increase your growth hormone, and this can happen by up to 2,000%. It's one of the many reasons I love intermittent fasting. Fasting will also make you more insulin sensitive. Certain amino acids will boost your growth hormone, but I don't typically recommend taking BCAAs, even though I do take them, and you can add them into your plan, I'll do another video on that at another time, but as long as you eat enough protein, it's not really necessary to be supplementing with extra BCAAs, you're not going to see any benefit by taking more amino acids, as long as you eat enough protein in the first place. Now things to be wary of is insulin. Now insulin is not a terrible hormone that often everybody thinks it is because insulin does play many very important roles in the body and with building muscle. But you do want to be wary of it. And that's because if you have very high insulin, you can have very low growth hormone. So we don't want that. The way that I would control insulin is first of all, making sure you're not overweight or obese. And second of all, don't eat too frequently because every time you consume calories, you spike insulin. The idea and the old myth that eating little and often six meals a day is going to help burn the most fat is actually wrong. It's going to make you have more insulin in the body, less growth hormone, and it's not a good idea. You're better off eating maybe three meals per day and no snacks. Just having your three meals. If you're fasting, then you can start your first meal at, say, 12, 1 p.m., have another meal at 4 p.m. and have another meal at 8 p.m. They're your three meals and you're not spiking insulin too much throughout the day. I hope you got some value from that very first tip. We still have two more to go, so make sure you stay tuned for them. But also, if you could just click the like button very quickly, it just lets me know that I'm doing a good job. It lets me know that you're enjoying the video and leave any comments you have down below, but please click that like button. The second fat burning hormone is the thyroid hormone. Now let's talk about T3 and T4. So T4 is actually the inactive form and T3 is the active form, which T4 converts to T3 
through the liver and various other organs. I recommend taking a supplement called selenium. This is a trace mineral and what it helps do is it basically helps speed that process of converting from T4 to T3. That's going to boost your thyroid hormone. I'll leave an image on the screen right now of the one that I choose to take. I take it in 200 micrograms but that's up to you. You can do your own research, talk to your own doctor about your supplementation. The other supplement that I do recommend is iodine. You can get iodine from different supplements, but I like to get it from sea kelp. The best type of sea kelp you can get is gonna be Icelandic sea kelp. The one that I sometimes take is actually one from Ireland. So I sort of alternate the two. I have one from Ireland that I take and one which is an Icelandic sea kelp. That's gonna be the best way to get your iodine and that is going to speed up your thyroid hormone. Also, if you didn't get a chance to like the video or you forgot, this is your chance to click that like button. The next fat burning hormone that you need to optimize is testosterone. Now, some of the ways to boost testosterone are weight training and strength training, but more specifically, it's focusing on compound movements. So compound movements are exercises that work multiple muscle groups at once. So your big body movements, such as the bench press, such as squats, bent over rows, those type of exercises are gonna help boost your testosterone. Another amazing way to optimize your testosterone levels is to take vitamin D3, especially in these times, if you don't want to get ill with the times that we live in right now, I'm not gonna say the specific words because you're not allowed to say that on YouTube, then if you don't wanna get ill, take vitamin D3. It's one of the best things you can do for your immune system. It actually controls the immune system and it's actually classed as a hormone in itself. If you are taking vitamin D3, you need to take that with vitamin K2 because they work together. K2 basically helps you absorb the vitamin D3. And in terms of dosages, do your own research. I don't want to tell you what to do. I have many doctors that totally disagree with what I say, but let's just not forget, I'm not reading from a textbook. I'm actually spending hours and hours of time reading all the studies I can find, looking at all the different tests that have been done on large numbers of people. I'm not against doctors, but a lot of doctors just tell you the thing that it says on the back of the bottle. Oh, it says take 400 international units. Taking 400 international units is absolutely nothing. For me personally, I take anywhere between 10 and 12,000 IU of vitamin D per day. And again, people might think that's too much, but if you just go outside in the full sun for 20 minutes, you're gonna get about 40,000 IU of vitamin D. So when people say that's too much, I think that's stupidity. But once again, do your research on your own, figure that out for yourself. Another thing that I would add is make sure that your diet is 80% at least nutrient dense foods, which basically means foods such as nuts, milk, eggs, meats, potatoes, things like that, real foods, non-processed foods. Now, that doesn't mean you can't eat any processed foods, but if most of your diet is junk food and things you put in the microwave, that's not gonna optimize your testosterone levels. Another thing for you guys wanting to get lean is don't eat in a calorie deficit for too long. Make sure you bounce your calories back up to maintenance and slowly gain some weight back, or when you're bulking up trying to build some muscle. I don't want you to eat in a calorie deficit for too long. That again is going to affect your testosterone levels. Another thing is the opposite of testosterone, which is estrogen, which again is not all bad, even though everybody says it's bad, but too much estrogen means lower testosterone. Women have very high estrogen, very low testosterone. Men should have very high testosterone, very low estrogen. Which leads me into this little bonus that I have for you. The next video that you're going to want to watch is a full in-depth video that I did on how to actually boost your testosterone levels naturally. So I've given you a little idea of the three fat burning hormones, but if you want to learn everything you can do to boost your testosterone levels, then that's the video you're going to want to watch next.